culture is? You hear me talk about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. The Bible talks about it. Jesus actually talked about the kingdom of heaven over and over and over again. That we live inside of his kingdom and in, in, in his kingdom under his authority. We actually function under the sovereignty of a mighty God. We don't live in a democracy spiritually where we get to vote on uh, what life we live. We don't get to say ah, Jesus has been Lord too long. Let's vote in a new Lord. He doesn't really know what he's doing. I think we need to change power. No, God is the same today, yes. yesterday, yes. and but forever. That's right. What happens in the church all too often is we get caught up in things that should be normal culturally. You know what I mean? Like in America, we all drive cars. So when you see someone with a car, you don't think, well, look, he's got a car, right? Or when you see someone drive to work every day, you know, or even driving to D.C., you don't say, wow, that's sure a driving man, right? Mm -hmm. You don't really get caught up in him driving. Mm -hmm. And we're, we drive a lot in this region. It, but it's no big deal because it's a part of our culture. culture. You know, in the kingdom of heaven, one of the things that should be a part of our culture is prayer. Praying should be an active component in the culture of being a member of this society. We should pray so much that it shouldn't be an unusual thing when someone is praying for you. When you run into someone who prays, it's not, shouldn't be like, that sure is a praying person. Well, no, of course he's a praying person. Why? Because he's a member of this culture. It's what I do in this society, spiritually, because I claim to be a part of this kingdom, crying out to God, talking to my king, surrendering him to his will. That's just part of what we do. You can't really call me out. What I do is I pray for people that matter to me. If you matter to me, you get prayers. I call up to Lord. I have an everyday list, a weekly list, a monthly list, some people I don't pray for every day. Just being honest, I pray for some people once a month. And I don't lie to people. Some people, I'm like, I pray for you at least once a month. They say, oh, really, that's great. But they don't realize I have an everyday list. There's some people that are <laughs> every day where I'm just like, Lord, you got to help this person. I don't know what's going on in their life. But he brings me to my knees for them every day. I say all that to say is somehow you fell on my everyday list. Somehow the Lord has placed somebody on my everyday list. It's not a big deal. It's a part of my culture. I pray for my daughter every day of the week. I never, never go a day without praying for my daughter. Why? Because that's a part of my culture. What happens too often is we take these things that God has given us as a component of our lives, as a component of our existence, to believe that to be some unique concept. When it's not. In reality, it is what we are made of. It's what we're composed of. Like when, in a little bit, we're going to go and anoint the prayer wall. Uh, Ms. Zona gave me these, this concept about prayer and putting our prayers up. Yeah. And we've done a prayer wall before, yeah. but she wants to put up a cross on the side. We're going to do it. We're going to pin our, 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 um, our uh, prayers to the cross and leave it there forever. We're never going to take it down. Just like when we write our things on the prayer wall after it's anointed, it's going to be up there forever for people to constantly pray and have prayer over. Why? Not because it's something special, but it's because it's a part of our culture. culture. Just like having faith in God should not be some unusual thing. It should be an active component of our culture. culture. And not just ordinary faith, but the kind of faith that leaps you over the top and turns you into a giant killer. I mean radical, unusual, ridiculous, powerful, power-packed faith. Uh, uh, Hebrews 11, 1 and 2 says, Now faith is the... Substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, and for by this the elders obtained good testimony. From their faith they obtained good testimony, right. not from their deeds. Yeah. That's right. They became powerful men and women of God because they placed their confidence in a God they believed in. And they didn't do it just saying, you know, I'm going to show everybody how powerful a man of God I am. 
No, what they did is they said, this is part of my culture. This is just what I do. Do you trust God? I trust God. How do you trust God? It's just how I do. It's just how I roll. It's like the first lady was making the joke this morning, which was funny, by the way. <laughs> she didn't do the joke justice, so I'm going to redo it. <laughs> In the little quote, it said, hey, I'm not going to be able to make it today. Oh, Aww, why not? Because I don't want to. That's <laughs> just funny to me, man. Some people just, you know, if you were honest with people, you would just tell them, I just don't want, I don't feel like being bothered with you today. The sad part about it is, there's a lot of people that treat God that same way. Why don't you come to church? I just don't want to come to church. Why aren't you praying? I'm just busy doing something else. Why aren't you, why did you pray for me? No, why not? I'm sorry, I had other stuff to do. What people don't realize is what should be a cultural and natural component of our existence has now become some radical concept. Some wow. radical some wow. radical view of the universe is what God expects of us culturally yes, as a norm. I wrote down these little things, so please, this lesson might be broken up, maybe it won't, I don't know. Hebrew, John 11, 30-48, I'm not going to read it all. And the Lord, by this time, there was they, they went to go see him. I'm going to, at verse 30, now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in a place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went there, followed her, saying, she is coming to the tomb to weep there. Then when Martha came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would I not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews had come, who come with her weeping, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Mm -hmm. Then the Jews said, just, just so real quickly, uh, I'm going to put this out there because this is a very short scripture, but it says deep things. Jesus wept. It's okay to cry. A lot of times we get caught up spiritually believing that we can't cry. We can't let our emotions out. Jesus wept. We were made to be emotional beings. You were free to cry. You are free to laugh. You know, I used to get a lot of grief for cracking jokes in the pulpit. People hated that. It's okay to laugh sometimes. It's okay to cry sometimes. It's okay to show how you feel sometimes. God did not make me a robot. He gave me feelings for a reason. If you do not vent your emotions, you become a psycho, crazy, ridiculous person that I will never trust. People who don't Amen. ever show, I'm just being honest, people who never show emotions, there's something wrong with them. Amen. They really don't. And it's funny because everybody sort of thinks that everyone should show emotions the way you do. They don't have to. That's right. I, I've learned over the years that everybody's sad doesn't look like everybody else is sad. That's right. And everybody's Amen. smile doesn't look like everybody else's That's right. smile. And not everybody's a, a hurt doesn't look like everybody else is hurt. That's Let right. people hurt the way they need to hurt. Right. Get off of everybody's back. Yeah. Let people Amen. be who they gotta be. Amen. You know, sometimes you just gotta stop trying to turn everybody into you. Because if you really thought long enough, you really aren't all of that. Come on now. Come on. You, really not. you really don't have the corner on how to show emotions. Because I know how people are sometimes. I don't like how you show emotions, but get off my back. You show your emotions your way. I show my emotions my way. Sometimes I want to cry. Sometimes I don't. You know, if I don't feel like crying, I don't cry. Leave me alone. You cry. Amen. Amen. But don't be ashamed of your emotions. That's be right. free being you. That was your thing you put up last night, which is interesting because people who don't know how to uh, display their emotions effectively get abused and get hurt. Because they believe, they believe your emotions are supposed to be their emotions. Yes, that's right. Yes. And they feel guilty because they don't have your my emotions. emotions. Yep. Get off my back. Wow. Just, I know this had nothing to do with the lesson. <laughs> but I was an elder in the holiness church, and people really didn't think that I was Holy Ghost filled because I didn't hoop enough. That's right. Well, if I'm going to hoop, I will hoop when I feel like it. That's right. But I don't feel like it. Anyway. <laughs> really. Feel your emotions. And express them the way you need to express them. Not everybody. Just really. Not everybody's going to be.
be emotive like me. I come from a family where we wear our emotions on our sleeves. Buck wild and raw. Cynical tell that. My, my mom, she will, and, if, and she'll even probably get mad at me for saying that. But she, it shows her emotions just period. If she feel it, she, she feel it. She used to say to me all the time, it used to make me mad. She said, it's not how you said it, it's how, it's how I heard it. That's it, that's it. Is that how she said it? Yep. It's not what you meant, it's how I felt when you said it. What? <laughs> I can't control what comes out of my mouth to make how you feel. I would never say that to her. And I'm just joking, Mom. <laughs> but she's owned her feelings. Yes, she has. And I'm saying to everybody else, own your feelings. You hurt, be hurt. Yes. If you lose somebody, cry. If you are frustrated, be frustrated. That's right. The Bible says be angry. Answer. But sin not. Right. Be mad at people. Just don't stab them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Woo. We cool with that, right? <laughs> Making sure I got that out there. <laughs> it's okay to be mad. Just, just, don't, just don't drop kick them in the hallway. <laughs> then Jesus said, see how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man who opened his eyes, eyes of the blind, also have kept this man from dying? And then Jesus again groaned in himself, said to the tomb, it was a cave, and stones lay against it. And then Jesus said, away, take away the stone. Martha, the son, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench. For he has been dead for four days. And then Jesus, I'm just going to stop here for a quick second. Because this is actually important. And this is not the lesson. This is just stuff that poured into my spirit while I was sitting up this last night at 2 in the morning and couldn't <laughs> formulate my thinking. But I need to get this to you. Amen. Sometimes, uh, it, it, just real quick, you cannot expect miracles from a God you don't have connection with. Amen. If you don't have a connection with a God, with a Christ, you can't expect his miracles. If he doesn't know who you are, don't expect anything from him. If you don't, if you don't know who he is, quit trying to call yourself to be super spiritual. What happens a lot of times is because you went to church on a Sunday last month or heard a good sermon from T.D. Jakes a few years ago, you feel that you have some spiritual insight or some magical connection with a God you don't even know. If you want miracles, know somebody, connect with somebody, meet your Jesus, yes. make it real with yes. yourself. It's my my culture to know Jesus. Yes. Telling you how I feel about it. But look at this. Sometimes, even when people are praying for you, even when Jesus is telling you something and telling you something about somebody else, somebody's going to pipe in saying, I can't let this go because that person stinks. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, no, 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 Jesus. You can't move the stone off of this, brother, because... He's stinking up the joint. He been doing, look, he been dead for four days. He been in drama for four years. She been on crack for 20 years. She been on crime. She been doing crime. He just, he messed up. He a messed up individual, Lord. I can't let him, no, we can't pray for him. Don't remove that stone because by now, he's stinking up the joint. Oh my God. In other words, don't look for your miracles through somebody else's opinion. Come on, now. That's right. Don't, don't let your miracle, don't let Jesus speaking into your life be a reflect. Don't, don't filter God speaking to you through somebody else's thoughts of you. Because what people will do is see your stench. Or they'll see the potential of your stench. Because get this, they didn't see smell Lazarus. The stone ain't been removed yet. She did not want to move the stone because she assumed there would be some stench. So in other words, no, you can't have your miracle because I have a feeling you stink. Oh no, I can't believe you're going to be delivered because I have a feeling there's something about you that stinks. You've been in this too long. You've been in your dead, dumb, ugly situation too long. I can't pray for you. 
And if you come to somebody and say, I'm praying for such and such, I'm believing a miracle. You know, I believe in a miracle for this sister. I'm believing a miracle for that young sister right there. Oh, no. Pastor, you don't understand what they've been through. They've been through a life, too. They look, and they've been, look, I know what they've been through. By now, you know they stink. Jesus. And we got to be like Jesus. And Jesus just came back with, look. He didn't even analyze it. He didn't debate it. Come on. This is another thing real quick. Church people have too much interest in debating points that God already resolved. Amen. See, what we would have done is we would have said, well, let me explain. Let me do an exegetical explanation of how people can change. <laughs> let, please, let me please open the word to you so I can explain to you that this person probably does not stink. And even if they do, we shall be forgiven. No, what Jesus said is, Come on. He said, Jesus, and Jesus said to her, did I not say to you, Come on. <laughs> that if you believe, you would see the glory of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then they took away the stone. In other words, let me just say this real quick. Jesus just said, time out. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask all of that. <laughs> oh, That's what I'm talking about. I wasn't asking you if he stank. I wasn't debating what he was wearing when he went into the tomb. No, I didn't even want to know how he died. You notice he didn't say, was it a heart attack? Was it cancer? Was it the flu? He wasn't interested in any of that. What we want to do is we want to get all the facts before we begin to pray. But see, the reality is we should approach prayer as culture. We just pray. We show up on the scene. We walk into a room. Somebody died. Time to pray. No, what we do is we walk in and say, oh, can you explain to me exactly what happened to this person? No, they got hit in the car. They had a car accident. They might be on drugs. They're having trouble with their relationship. Oh, Lord, Pastor, will you pray for me? My life's got cut off. I don't ask, do you know how to budget your money first? Wow. What I do yeah. first is pray. Yes. Jesus said, did I not explain to you that if you trust me, that if you surrender to me, that if you just believe something, if you stop being such a whiny, analytical baby, and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you've already heard me because, the, because of the people who are standing by My said eyes. this, and they may believe that he, uh, and that they may believe that you sent me. Now that when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice. Let me just stop for another quick second because all this stuff is pouring into my head. Deacon sent out a, a thing this morning, and he sends out these prayer things all the time. But he sent out one this morning that I was having a conversation with. Give me a second, because i got to find it on my phone. He sent out, um, he, uh, yesterday I was talking with uh, pa uh, Pastor Allen, and we were having a, a very interesting conversation. Yes. But Deacon sent this thing, and it said, uh, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Yes. Psalms 133 and 1. How good and perfect, yes. how good and blessed, how good and wonderful it is when we dwell together yes. in, unity. in unity. Do you realize that the blessing is in the unity? Yes, it is. It says when we dwell together. That's right. How good it is for us to dwell together. There is a gift in being connected. Yes, it is. There's an active, honest, sincere gift in being connected. You might not realize this, but the people, who got the miracle? In this story, who got rose from the dead? Lazarus. Lazarus was the one who rose from the dead. Is that correct? Yes, I'm just making sure we're all in agreement. Was it Lazarus that rose from the dead? Yes. Lazarus was dead, yes. right? He was a dead person, correct? Yes. Do we recognize that dead people don't pray? Is that correct? So in other words, the only person who got the miracle was the one that wasn't praying. So the miracle came to one person because other people were praying. Come on now. Woo, Jesus, say so. So he got his deliverance because other people cared enough about him to pray for him. Keep going. Let's keep going. How good.
good it is for us to dwell together in unity. When you are surrounded by people that pray for you, you have miracles that can flow into your life. We're in agreement with that, right? Yes. So when you are not surrounded by people who won't pray for you, or when you're surrounded by people that don't pray for you, or say they'll pray for you, or pretend like they'll pray for you, but you know they don't pray for you. Amen. Tell the truth. You know some people who say they're praying for you. You know they're not praying Amen. for you. Is it just me? I can't be the only one that has a that smart. Y'all are smart too. You know some people that say, I'm going to pray for you. You know they ain't praying for you. If that's the only people you got in your life, then why are you shocked you don't have miracles? Ooh, my God. Listen to this. This is important. You have to have people around you that pray, that care enough about you to pray for you even when you can't. Even when you can't. That's right. That's my culture. In my culture, we pray for each other. That's right. Even when you don't want it. I'm praying for you. I don't want your stanky prayers. I ain't here asking if you want it. Oh, my God. Oh, just so you know, I've had people say stuff like that to me. Yes. People are mean. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray for you. I don't need your prayers. That's right. Yeah, you do. <laughs> so true. You really do. <laughs> you need it more than you want it. I'm going to pray for you even if you don't want it. Why? Because that's what I do, baby. You got to have it in your mind that you pray for people. His miracle came because other people cared about him. And it is good. And it is blessed to have people around you when the people of God dwell together. We block each other's blessings when we stop coming to church. Ooh. Yes, sir. I'm going to let that one sink in for yes, a hot sir. second. That's right. You can't expect, listen, they were surrounding the tomb. Jesus came there four days later and they were still there praying. How many people have in their life people that care enough about them to pray for them even after they've been dead a while? Jesus. Even after they've lost a little bit. Even after they've been broken a little while. Listen, while you're spending your time, this is the while you're spending your time trying to get off to your isolated spot, because that's what happens in the church a lot of times. They feel like they need to get away and get a break from all of this. Then you what you're doing is you shut the door to your blessings. That is some, that's an American ideal. What we do is we feel like we need to get away. When you do that, you block, you slam the door on the potential of your blessing. You literally say, I don't want a blessing. Slam. Or I need to think about it. You sit and think about your blessings when you could actually have them. If I, if I walked up to someone and said, hey, Jessica, I want to give you a suitcase full of diamonds. Do you want it? Would your response be, Hmm, suitcase full of diamonds. Let me think about this for a little while. In fact, let me go to my closet and sit in my closet for a few days to analyze that. Or would you say, gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give I'm going to find a way to cash this in. Or if your lights get cut off and somebody said, here's the money to pay it right now. Would you say, let me pray about it first. I'm enjoying living in the dark. Mm. Or your water got cut off And I say hey let me pay it right now Would your response be thank you very much Or no thank you Or hold on let me get some time to clarity Let me pray about that As to whether I want to bathe mm -hmm. my, 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 my. Although I do think some people Are under that prayer thought right now <laughs> They're not sure they want to bathe But anyway <laughs> Anyway <laughs> Anyway, why are you holding off on you receiving your blessings by choosing to be isolated? It is my culture to pray for each other. It's what I do, baby. It's what you should do. It's what we are all about. Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Do you notice he didn't say, now here's another thing. I'm sorry, I just got to get all this stuff out. The next part of this is good too. Do you notice he didn't say, hold, open up the tomb, I need to go in with it. Speak, Lord. He didn't say, open up that tomb. I'm going in. I'm going in there with him. I need to get in there with him. I want to be where he's at. Mm. You know, that's a church thing where people like to, uh, how are you going to help people if you don't go into their community? How are you going to help people if you don't go? No, sometimes you need to look at some people and say, come out. All right, come out of your drama. Come out of your lies. Come out of your drug abuse. Come out of that crack house. No, I, what they, a lot of people want to do is they want to find themselves in, angle themselves in situations that they know they can't handle. Amen. Come on. Speak, Lord. You know you can't handle that. Don't go in there. That doesn't mean you don't have power over it. Call it out. Jesus didn't 
walked into the tomb, he called it out. Yes, he did. There you go. Lazarus. Come on. Yes. Come forth. Yes. Woo, Jesus. And he came out. And he and he had uh, and he who had died, they made sure everybody knew that, came out bound, hand and foot, with grave clothes on, and his face was wrapped with the cloth. And Jesus said to him, Loose him. Yes, yes. And let him go. <laughs> now I need to get this. Because Lazarus came out alive. But he was still tied up. Some people come out of their tomb. Renewed, yes. refreshed, yes. alive, but still yes. bound up. Mm -hmm. They still tied up. They couldn't wrap, listen, they couldn't pull the ropes off of themselves. They were free, but they couldn't get the ropes off. Yes. He yes. was yes. free, but he couldn't get the face off his face. He was free, but he couldn't get his own body out. Yes. Too often, we reject the new life of other people because they didn't have the natural strength to remove the the, uh, the, the bounds, the ropes off of their own body. Yes. Jesus didn't say, stand back, because if he really believes, he'll take the ropes off himself. Mm. Jesus. That's, that's I'm laughing because that's how church people that's do. It. They don't, he didn't say, stand back, because mm -hmm. if he's a real man of God, if he really trusts me, he'll pull him ropes off himself. Know mm -hmm. what Jesus said to the other people nearby. He said, loose him and let him go. Jesus. Then many of the Jews had, had come with Mary and seen them think that Jesus did, and then they believed him. But listen, I want to stay back on here. Then Jesus said, you people who are here, loose him and let him go. Sometimes when you're helping people be free, and this is what church people, because we got this ego, we think when we're helping people get their ropes off, we're a part of their healing. Amen. Mm. I'm not a part. You're not a part of his healing. He was dead. Jesus brought him back to life. That's All it. I did was help him get clean. That's it. That's it. That's it. Jesus. Jesus. Helping people get clean is not the miracle. Mm. Them coming back from the dead is the miracle. Yeah. Too often we misthink that. We literally think because I had a hand in taking the ropes off, I also had a hand in the miracle. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I did not. What I did was what he told me to do. First, he did his job by bringing a dead person back to life. Yes. Then I did my job, helping them get their ropes off. Yes, yes. Too often we reject other people's healings because they don't come out in the suit. Right. Jesus. We reject other people's transformation because they don't come out looking as good as me. <laughs> That's a high standard, baby. Come on. <laughs> Too often they don't come out looking like they like they uh, have been renewed, refreshed, transformed. Sometimes they come out of their tomb stinking, That's right. wrapped up, That's right. beaten still, yeah. hopping. Yes. Can't see because their face is covered up. Don't know direction because they can't see from their past death. Jesus. My job isn't to tell them how dead they were. My job is to loose them. Thank you, Lord. Why don't we get so geeked up about taking robes off of people as we do about talking about how dead they are? Jesus. That's the flaw in, in, our, in, in not knowing the culture you live in. When you think the world represents your culture. When you think the people represent. When you think that church people are the church. Amen. Yeah. 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 I don't live by the standard of church people. Because mm -hmm. then I would be mean, backstabby, mm -hmm. talk bad about people, Gossipy. don't pray for nobody. Oh, I'm telling the truth. Yes, you mm -hmm. are. But the culture of the church because I believe in the church. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big believer in the church. I'm a believer in religion too. So people who say, it's not about religion, it's about relationship. No, I worship my God. That's right. He's not just my friend and my daddy. He's the God I bow down to. And at the end of the day, I can assure you of this. At the, at every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord. And nobody is in at the end of the day is going to run up to Jesus and say, Jesus, high five, brother. No, you're going to bow. Hey, come on now. 
Jesus, you're my brother, man. We're friends. We got a relationship. No, you're going to bow. You're not going to say, yo, hey, Tooth, what's shaking, brother? You're going to say, you're the Lord. That's right. See, that's where people mix it up. Right now, we're trying to be hyper-familiar with a God that we rely on. Jesus, say so. We got to care about one another, to pray about one another, and renew, remove the wraps from around their face. Because get this, back again, sometimes your death will cause blindness. Has anyone ever been so hurt and so broken that they could no longer see straight? Yes. 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 Can't be just me. Have you ever been so hurt that now what made sense didn't make sense? Yeah. Yeah. What you know is right don't feel right. Jesus. Uh, it can't just be me. I just know. I just on, gotta God. know. Amen. I'm Jesus. telling you now, what happens in many occasions is you've been healed. But because of a death you just came out of, you still are wrapped up. You know, as it said, Lazarus' face was still covered. Lazarus could not see Lazarus could not walk. Lazarus could not move. We just think about his healing. But when he came out of the tomb, he didn't come out of Lazarus on the happy day. He came out of Lazarus on the I still stink. I'm still wrapped up. I'm still dirty. Yeah, I still smell. I'm still Lazarus that just was dead for four days. And I need a little help. Jesus. See, in my culture, we help each other. That's right. And we, and get this, it says, and when the Jews saw that this happened, then they believed in him. But some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things that Jesus did. And the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, what shall we do? For this man works many signs. If we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him. And the Romans came. And the Romans will come and take away both the place and the nation real quick. Just because God is moving in your life does not mean everybody's going to like it. Jesus, amen. Just because there's miracles that are working in your life, just because God did a mighty work in your situation doesn't mean that everybody's going to be happy about what just happened to you. Just because you found a way to reconcile with your spouse, just because you found a way to somehow pay your bills, just because somehow you found a job, just because somehow you got clean, somehow just because you were transformed from your stinking thinking and your messed up mind does not mean that everybody is going to be happy about it. Some people are going to have something to say about what you just got transformed to, no matter how good it was. Do you think Lazarus hopped out of the tomb, got removed of his blindness, and looked around to take inventory of how many people was with him and how many people were not? Or do you think he just got happy and lived? Church people, I'm telling you. Some of us need to just get happy and live. That's right. See, what we're doing too often is we remove the ropes from over our face. We unwrap the bounds that have kept us. And instead of being happy and live, we decide to take inventory. Who was really with me? Who was really praying for me? Oh, you didn't pray for me? Oh, I got to show you. No, move on. That's right. That's right. Move on. I'm going to tell you this, and it's a quote I love. I think Bishop said it. Somebody said it. It was a great quote. Whoever said it, it was genius. In fact, I'm going to take credit for it. I said it. <laughs> if somebody leaves your life, if somebody walks out the door, if somebody makes an exit stage left, then they were not a part of your God-given destiny. Amen, amen, amen. Let them go. Don't jump, don't re become renewed, refreshed, and alive. Being all stressed about the people who aren't there to cheer for you. If they left, that was their loss, not yours. Amen. If they left you, you cheer. Because now your story moves on. Too often we sit around whining and complaining and crying because somebody left your story. They left your story. You didn't leave theirs. Who cares about their story? That's another book. I'm not reading that book. I'm the central character in my own story, baby. Who in this room, nobody in this room looks out of their eyes and sees somebody else's life. 
You look out of your eyes and see your life. From your perspective, you are the center of the story. From your perspective, you are the center of what's going on in this room. From my perspective, it's all about me preaching. From your perspective, it's all about hearing the preaching. Everybody is living their story. Stop trying to get caught up in somebody else's story. If they left your life, that was another story. Amen. Chapters close in every book. Every page. You can't read a book staying on the same page. Let the page turn. Okay, I read that page. Next page. Okay, I read that page. Next page. Okay, I read that page. Get this. If you don't ever turn the page, you don't ever get to the end of the story. Mm. Come on. And if you don't let some characters go, if you stay committed and slave to an old character that left, yeah. how often have, yeah, and, and I know, because I'm old now, but I used to be young like y'all. Don't let this face fool you, I'm old. I used to be young. How often have we found ourselves stressing and frustrated and whining and even crying over somebody who has left? And probably doesn't even remember you. Be, be real. How often have you found yourself stressing over somebody who is no longer an active component to your story? When you are free, let somebody help you get them bounds off. Do not take inventory. Just start to live. The story goes on. If you're in it, it's moving. You can be healed. You can be delivered. You can be transformed. You can be renewed. You can be brought back to life. And it does not matter who stays in your story. Doesn't mean anything. Read the book of Ruth. Orpah left. The story didn't stop. Orpah left the story. Not Ruth. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Orpah left the story. Not Ruth. Naomi was still in the story. Boaz was still in the story, but Oprah, le Oprah left. Sometimes Oprah leaves. Why are we stressing over Oprah? Live. Move on. Go on with your story. Live your life. Remove your bonds. Rejoice. Praise. Shout. Dance. Pray. Into a culture where transformation occurs. As opposed to walking around free, take an inventory of what killed you. Jesus. At some point, you just move on. At some point, you just transform. I'm going to say this because I've lived a long time. I'm really not that old, but it feels old. David said, I was young, but now I'm old. And yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken, right. nor his seed begging bread. Right. In other words, life goes on. I've lived a long time. I used to be old, now I'm young. I used to be young, but now I'm old. And all of that time, everybody that God has said he's going to watch, got watched. Every person that God said he was going to take care of, got taken care of. Every person that God promised renewal, got renewed. Every single person. God is not a God that he can lie, nor is he a son of man that he can even change his mind. If he said it, he's going to do it. All you have to do is trust it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Is it easy to trust? No, it's not easy to trust. But show me the verse that said it would be. Come on now. Come on, people. Is it easy to surrender? No, it's not easy to surrender. Show me the verse that said it would be. All I can do is tell you this works. This works. Surrender works. Trusting God works. Letting go of your drama works. Being healed and renewed works. Untaking the bonds works. Prayer works. God doing what he says he can do works. Giving your confidence in him works. Lean not on your own understanding. Yeah, God. Yeah, 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 God. But trust in the Lord. It works. Is it always easy? No, it's not always easy. But too many of us, when God calls us out of our tomb, we refuse to come out. When Jesus said, come forth, Lazarus, I'm going to give you this. When he said, come forth, Lazarus, come forth. Jesus was, Lazarus was wrapped up. Lazarus' face was covered. He was 
probably uncomfortable, just so you know, they wrapped them in a single bound. They didn't wrap them around the arm so they could walk around like a mummy. They wrapped them as one big unit. Lazarus, come forth! Lazarus, when the light came back into him, he had to wiggle on the thing. He said, I can't see, but I know I'm alive. Come forth! It couldn't have been easy to get off that tomb. But he said, come forth! He said, I got it, I can do it. I know I can do it. I, I, he had to fall down. Then he, hop, he said he hopped out. He said, come forth! Listen, it is not always easy to move into your deliverance. Jesus, say that. But if you trust God, no matter how hard it is, you can wrap yourself up, you can be bound, you can be tied, you may not be able to see, but you can work your way out of the tomb so other people can help you. Somebody needs to say amen to that one. Amen. Amen. Not meant to do it alone. You are not meant to do it alone. And every time we choose to be alone, we block our own blessings or we block somebody else. Jesus. Too often we come out of our tomb. We find ourselves healed. We find ourselves with a job. We find ourselves off drugs. We find ourselves body healed. And instead of rejoicing more, come on. then we decide I don't need to be in church as much. Yeah. My Lord. Just because you got, just because life came back don't mean you're not bound anymore. Somebody need to write that one down. Just because you got renewed in your life and you're now alive does not mean you are not bound anymore. That's right. Sometimes your healing comes and you are still bound up. Sometimes your healing comes and you are still blind. Sometimes your healing comes and you do not have mobility or movement or quickness. And you need somebody to say, loose him. Yes, yes. Set him free. You can be free. You can be healed. And still not free. Yes. See, in the church right. too often, we right. believe that because I got healed, now I'm free. You are not free until you've been loose. Oh, say so. My God. Too many people in the church are in the church absolutely alive, full of power and energy. But because they don't want to ask for help. Come on. I'm even going to step back a little bit. Because I just realized something. You know who didn't ask for help? Lazarus. <laughs> Lazarus said, I'm going to make it. Lazarus said, I'm alive, baby. I don't care what I got to do. Jesus said, loose him and set him free. Mm -hmm. See, in my culture, we help people even if they don't ask. Say amen. 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 I'm going to put this out here real quick because uh, all too often in the church, we hear church people say stuff like, well, if he wanted help, he would have asked. Mm. Anybody ever heard somebody say that? I bet it was a church person, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> they, they tell you to mind your business. That's what they mean. They tell you to get other people's business. It was a church person that said, if he wanted help, I would he would have asked. Mm -hmm. He must not have wanted help that bad. Because he would have asked for help. I don't just I, I can't just butt up in their business. If they really want to help, look, that's pride. Pride coming from Paul. God don't like pride. <laughs> Lazarus didn't ask for help. Jesus offered it. Why don't we offer help? If you can't help, why don't you just offer it? Why don't you just walk up to somebody and just offer help? Look, you blind. You bound. Can I help you get them bounds off? Amen. Can I pray for you? You mind if I pray for you? When was the last time you walked up to somebody and just asked them if you could pray for them? Yeah. Or are you just too scared because they might say yes? Wow. Yeah, I said they might say yes. Your fear isn't them saying no. Your fear is you actually might have to actually pray for somebody. Yeah. 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 Uh, do you need prayer? Can I pray for you? Yes. Oh. I'll pray for you tonight. And if they say, no, pray for me right now. Oh. That's why I don't go to this church. I was asking for prayers. Praying people. I don't need all of that. Listen, it, this is the concept in my culture. Coming back to my culture. In the culture I'm a part of, we pray all the time, like breathing. In fact, the Bible says pray without ceasing. Yes. It's what I'm about, baby. I just pray. You pray to, you did you pray today? Yes. Amen. All too often you ask a church person, did you pray today? And they say, not yet. Yes. No, but I'm going to tonight. Yes. Yeah. 
You know, the Bible says, he who knows the good and does not do it unto him is a sin. Yeah. Every time you stop praying, you in sin. Ooh. Oh, I got deep now. That's why people Ooh. don't come to this church. Because <laughs> I put the heavy weights on. Every time you stop praying, you in sin. When we put this cross up here, I, that, look, I know it's going to take forever because people are not going to want this on. Nobody's going to want to be the first one to put something up. In fact, when we go out here and pray on this wall, we all going to write something on the wall. We're going to write our names or something out there because the way it has to work is you can't be too scared to talk to the guy you're supposed to be talking to all the time. Ooh. Let me say that one more time. You cannot be too scared to talk to the God that you're supposed to be talking to all the time. All the time. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. Unto him who knows the good and does not do it, unto him it is a sin. sin. If you stop praying, you're in sin. sin. If you are walking around and you recognize that someone actually needs prayer, you may not have money. I ain't got no money. But I got a God that has cattle on a thousand hills. When I pray for you, he does stuff. That's right. That's right. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I believe God hears my prayers. The effectual and fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. When I pray, something happens. Why? Because I don't stop praying. I just pray. I just pray. I don't know if it's going to work out the way I want it to. I just pray. I keep my mysteries in the closet. If he didn't answer, that's God's business, not mine. I'm praying like I know something's about to happen. Get this. I'm going to give you another scripture. Write it down and look it up. I think, uh, Hebrews 11 and 6. I'm not even on this anymore. Hebrews 11 and 6. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Why? Because you have to believe that he is. Yes. And that he is a rewarder yes. to those that diligently seek him. That's right. How many of you have been praying and diligently seeking? But don't believe that he's going to answer your prayer anymore. Jesus. How many of you have been on your knees praying for something, but have given up on the concept of it actually coming to pass? Just real quickly, it's impossible to please God from that position. The only way to please God is with confidence and surety. Yeah. My phrase, my personal catchphrase is trust God. If you cannot trust God, if you do not have confidence that he can do what he says he can do, if you are not believing that he is real, That's right. It's funny to me that it says that you have to believe that he is. Check that out. Hebrews 11 and 6. It actually says you have to believe that he is. It is funny to me that the idea of pleasing God falls into you also have to believe that he really exists. Yeah, right. Because a lot of church people, and I'm saying this in the <coughs> gentlest of ways. <laughs> a lot of church people do not believe that God is real. And that he really does stuff. Wow. How do I know? Because they live like God ain't there. There are a lot of Christian atheists. Who claim to know God. But live like he ain't there at all. They claim to trust him. But function like there's no trust at all. They claim to live for him. But their life is a reflection of foul, satanic existence. Jesus. It is impossible. It, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You have to believe that he is. And the only way that you know that you believe that he is, is that you live like he's really there. Nobody's going to walk up to me and just grab my wallet out of my pocket. Why? Because they know I'm really here. How many of you are trying to just sneak around and trick God? You say that you recognize that he's all-knowing and all-seeing, but somehow you sort of live like he might miss something you did. Jesus, Jesus. You say that he's a God that's watching all things and knows all things, but certain times of the night you think you can sneak off. I might well be able to fool my wife, but I sure I might be able to fool church people. But I sure can't you think trick God. I can't lying to God is really just lying to yourself. Because God knows your lie in your head. When you lie to God, God, I really pray every day. He's looking at you saying you are a liar and the truth ain't in you. That's it. Every time you say I'm really tired, you are a liar and the truth ain't in you. Every time you claim a spiritual gift that's not yours, you are a liar and the truth ain't in you. See, it has to come a time 
when we decide to ourselves that we want to please our God enough to live the life we claim to actually live.